Let's do some examples here. The first thing we want to do is find the domain of f of xy equals square root of x plus y plus 1 all over x minus 1. Now, a couple of considerations. First of all, we need everything under the square root, this must be greater than or equal to 0. So we need x plus y plus 1 greater than or equal to 0. The other piece that we need to consider is that this denominator needs to be non-zero. We're not allowed to take and divide by 0. Alright, so we'll also need x minus 1 not equal to 0. Alright, so we have a little bit of algebra to do, so let's figure this out. Uh, first of all, x plus y plus 1 greater than or equal to 0. This implies that y must be greater than or equal to negative x minus 1. And down below, we have x minus 1 not equal to 0. This means that x cannot be equal to 1. So let's draw our domain set. Recall that the domain set lives in the xy plane. And let's see what we get. First of all, y greater than or equal to negative x minus 1. Well, this has a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of negative 1. So if we were to plot that, that line looks something like the so that line looks something like the following. Now, this is an inequality, so we want y greater than or equal to negative x minus 1. If you pick a test point, like if you pick a test point uh, maybe here at the origin, so if you test the origin, is it true that 0 is greater than or equal to, well, negative 0, 0 minus 1? And the answer is yes, that's true, therefore this is the solution set for this inequality y greater than or equal to negative x minus 1. The other piece that we need to consider is that x cannot be equal to 1. And so, let's see, x equals 1 is right here. So we certainly cannot have any points that live on that. Okay, so we'll make an open circle right there. And then what else? Well, we can't have any points that live on this vertical line, x equals 1. So you have, in terms of the domain, you have all the points that live above this line, y equals negative x minus 1 up till that dotted line and then you got a bunch of points, infinitely many points on the other side. All right? But you can't have any points that live on that line x equals 1. Okay, so if you want to summarize, find the domain, you could say d equals the set of xy points such that x is not equal to 1 and, let me make a little space, y is greater than or equal to negative x minus 1. Okay, so you can just state your domain in set builder notation. We have a good picture of it here as well, but the set notation is also great. Okay, let's do another example. In our second example, let's find f of 3, 2 and the domain of f of xy, which equals x times ln of y squared minus x. All right, so first of all, let's evaluate the function at x equals 3, y equals 2. So that's my x, that's my y. Plugging in, we get 3 times ln of 2 squared minus 3. Well, this works out to be 3 times ln of 1, and recall that the natural log of 1 is just 0, so this is 3 times 0, which is 0. Okay, now let's find the domain. Well, notice that you can only take natural log of quantities that are strictly greater than zero. Why is that true? Well, if you were to draw the natural log function, like natural log of x, 
recall that it's asymptotic to this y-axis. In other words, you can never take natural log of zero and you can never take natural log of negative numbers. So that x or that argument has to always be positive. Okay, so we need y squared minus x to be strictly greater than to be strictly greater than zero. Well, what does that look like? That looks like y squared is greater than x. Okay, let's try to plot that. So here's our xy plane. And let's see, y equals, so y squared equals x looks like a sideways parabola, if you want to call it that. All right, now we're talking about a strict inequality here. So strict strict inequality means we have to do a dashed line. So let's make this a dashed line or a dotted line. Okay, and now the question is, are we going to shade over here to the right or to the left? So let's pick a test point. Let's test. Okay, so let's pick a test point. Let's pick a test point over 2 up 0. So let's test 2 comma 0. If we test this out, let's see, is 0 squared, that's our y coordinate, is that greater than 2? The answer is no. So I'm not going to shade in the piece of the plane that contains two zeros. So my solution set looks like everything exterior. Okay, let's write this down. The domain equals the set of xy points such that y squared is strictly greater than x. And we have that certainly plotted over here in our picture. Okay, let's do one last example. Let's find the domain and range of g of x, y equals the square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, so for the domain, we can only take the square root of quantities which are greater than or equal to 0. So let's set 9 minus x squared minus y squared greater than or equal to 0. And if we do that, we get 9 is greater than or equal to x squared plus y squared. Let's take a look at the plot. And the question is, do we shade on the inside or do we shade on the outside? So let's pick a test point of 0, 0. So the question is, is it true that 0, 0 satisfies this inequality? And that is true. 9 is greater than or equal to 0. So we're going to shade inside the circle. It's a solid circle because we have greater than or equal to in our problem here. So our domain set looks like the set of xy points such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9. Okay, now what about the range? Well, for the range we're really looking for what kind of output. So we know that um, we can never get negative values for the output. And the reason is, is that the square root of any real number, well, that's always greater than or equal to zero, right? I can't ever get like square root of seven or square root of zero or square root of 10, whatever it is. Those are always gonna be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so the question is, can I actually get zero as an output value? Well, certainly if x equals 3 and y equals 0, then g of 3, 0, plugging in, we get the square root of 9 minus 9 minus 0. We do get 0 as an output. So 0 is in our range. Now, the next thing I'd like to consider is how big, or what's the largest, what is the largest output value? Well, we've got the square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared. And the largest value here 
is going to be when the x and the y are 0, right? Because they're subtracting, and we'd like this to be really big. So it's going to be big when the 9 has nothing taken away from it. Well, that's happening when x and y are 0, and we get the square root of 9, which is 3. Okay, in other words, our range closed interval from 0 to 3. And if we were to draw this, and if, well, we know that our domain set is down here, 3, circle of radius 3. We know that we get 0, and we get all the way up to a maximum value of 3 on that z-axis. And so that would be a good visualization for our plot.